What is up everybody? Welcome back to the Mid-Level Media channel, your hub for everything physical media and entertainment. I am Ken. Today, guys, we are here to talk about the Todd Browning Sideshow Shocker set from the Criterion Collection. This just came out uh, this week. So yeah, we're going to talk about these three films for the first time on Blu-ray. We got Freaks from 1932, we got The Unknown from 1927, and we got The Mystic from 1925. Like I said, all for the first time on Blu-ray. I think for The Mystic in particular, this is the first time this has gotten any kind of home video release. I don't think it was on VHS or DVD or anything, whereas The Unknown, I think, had a DVD and, the, and Freaks also. Um, had a DVD. So I was definitely interested in watching all of these films. This box set really intrigued me when it was announced because Todd Browning, of course, notoriously uh, directed the movie Dracula from 1931 that really just kicked off all of the Universal monster movies. So I've just been interested in him as a director because he is, you know, one of the directors that I know of that made that shift from the silent film era uh, to the talkie era almost seamlessly. He's just a very fascinating director to me and somebody that I definitely want to dive deeper into his filmography. I think, I don't know how many films he made. I think he made like 30 or 40 movies in the 20s and the 30s primarily. He also made a number of movies in the 1910s as well. But yeah, we're going to dig into this box set though, guys. We're going to talk about the movies. We're going to talk about the transfer, picture quality, audio, uh, special features, all that stuff. Before I get into it though, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. We talk about physical media on this channel. That's what we do. So if you like that kind of stuff, hit the subscribe button. Also, let me know in the comment section below what you think of these movies. Um, I don't know how many uh, the people that watch my channel get into the classic movies from the 20s and the 30s, but if you've seen these movies, let me know um, in that comment section below. And then turn on bell notifications for all future videos. I've got reviews out the butt coming, guys. So much stuff. Physical media is insane right now, but I wanted to make sure I gave this collector set some time because, like I said, I was really looking forward to it. I don't usually talk about titles from the Criterion Collection, and one thing I'll say up front is this thing is $49, and I purchased it off of Amazon. I pre-ordered it for full price. The Criterion sale um, is coming. The Barnes & Noble November Criterion sale is coming, so I could have waited a couple of weeks and got this for a little bit cheaper, but I was like, no, I want to get this. I want to watch it, and I want to let you guys know if it's worth picking up or not, and we even also just got the flash sale, which I could have waited for that, but again, I wanted to get this as soon as it came out on release date, uh, so I did pre-order it, but let's get into talking about the movie. So Freaks was definitely the one I was looking forward to the most. You always hear about Freaks. You know, it feels like ever since I watched Dracula for the first time, like freaks always gets brought up as like his I, I would say his next um you know most well-known movie after dracula is probably freaks somebody could probably point out something else but to me it's dracula then it's freaks and this movie is kind of famous for you know him casting actors with real life disabilities like the people in this movie are really disabled. Like there's a guy in this movie that's just a torso. He's missing his arms. He's missing his legs. He's kind of, you know, shimmying on the ground to move around, kind of crawling back and forth. So, and there's real like, you know, conjoined twins. Is that what they call them? The thing about it is I feel like I heard that this was exploitative um, in nature and that they could never, people always brought that up and said they can never make a movie like this nowadays, which is probably true. But watching this movie, I didn't find it exploitative at all. Like, all of the characters in this movie, all of the, of the disabled characters, the freaks, like, it may be um, disrespectful in, like, title alone, just to call a movie freaks and have a bunch of disabled people. Like, that's kind of disrespectful. Um, but when you're watching the actual film, like, all the characters are treated with such dignity and respect. And you can just tell that Todd Browning had such a love um, for all of the characters and actors in his movies, but these disabled characters in particular as well. And they are so good. Like I, I was just so shocked and surprised by how endeared I was to every single character in this movie. I just felt an emotional connection to everyone throughout the film. 
And going into it, I kind of thought it was going to be more of like a horror film, which you could kind of argue that it is. There's definitely some horrific imagery. In particular, like the last scene like really got me. That That's like burned in my brain. I'm not going to spoil it, but it's kind of, they set it up in the beginning and then they pay it off in the end. And then there's a sequence in the end, which is kind of horrific with a bunch of them like crawling underneath the carriages and stuff. Uh, some pretty horrific stuff in the rain. Um... But the movie itself is, and all these movies take place in a circus. They have like the circus theme surrounding them. Uh, so that's kind of the theme of the box set, Sideshow Shockers. But it's not, none of these movies I would call horror films, if that makes any sense. They're, they're more, all of them are really kind of, uh, kind of romantic dramas in nature. They're almost like soap operas. I think somebody referred to that in one of the special features. They're almost like soap operas uh, when you're watching them. They all have a love story at their core. They all have somebody that's trying to trick somebody else um, or get something out of them. So it kind of plays a little bit like a soap opera throughout every single one of these movies. Um, but Freaks in particular, it's about a woman that's a part of the circus and she's trying to, um, you know, basically get the, the head guy of the circus who is a little person to fall in love with her so she can get his inheritance. And then all of the other, um, you know, disabled people, freaks, I feel bad calling them freaks, catch on to this and they try to warn him and he doesn't listen and they end up marrying each other. And a sequence that is freaking great is the after uh, wedding dinner party at the table uh, where they all start chanting at her, goople, gobble, goople, gobble, one of us. And then she's just like belligerent and drunk. That is such a great sequence. But this movie's not very long. Freaks is like an hour long. But in that hour, like I just, I form such a connection to every single character and I just thought everybody was fantastic and and just so endearing like I loved everybody I loved everybody's performance but Freaks is incredible like I thought it was an amazing movie I love Dracula but I kind of think Freaks is at least of the ones I've seen I've seen four Todd Browning films now I think Freaks is maybe his best movie I would actually Put it above Dracula just because I feel like I have more like Bella Gosi, don't get me wrong, is such an iconic uh, force of nature in Dracula. But I just feel more of an emotional connection to the story and freaks and the characters than I do Dracula. So I would put freaks above Dracula. This is like a four and a half to possibly five star movie for me. I absolutely uh, loved freaks. Now, getting into some of the, the two movies from the 20s. Now, the thing you have to understand about the two movies in the 20s is they are silent films. Freaks um, is a talkie, so the characters are talking in the movie and there's dialogue and everything like that. But when you go back and watch The Unknown and The Mystic, they are silent films. And I've seen one silent film before. I saw City Lights with Charlie Chaplin, but that was in the 30s. That was kind of at the end of the silent film era when they were transitioning. Um, but I, I enjoyed both of these films a lot. I think that the unknown, I probably enjoyed, um, a little bit more than the mystic, the mystic kind of drug a little bit for me. And it is the longest film in this box at at about an hour and 15 minutes. The unknown I think is about an hour and eight minutes, but Lon Chaney in this movie, and I don't know too much about this actor at all, but apparently he was in a, a lot, um, of Todd Browning's films, but he is spectacular in this movie. Just like the way he acts with just his face alone, like conveys so much. And they, the actors really had to do a lot with like facial expressions and stuff like that in these silent films. You get dialogue pop up on the screen like from time to time. I'll, I'll show you all examples of it. Characters will be talking and then there'll be dialogue that pops up that kind of fills in what they're saying. But not for everything. Like you'll get a little bit of that, but then they'll go long sequences where you just have to kind of decipher what they're saying and just imagine what they're saying with your own mind and fill in the gaps, you know, in some of the dialogue sequences. Um, but the dialogue's kind of popping back and forth, but what Lon Chaney does just with his like body language and facial expressions, like you just feel like you get to know that character so well through his facial expressions. So he was so good and he's somebody that I want to definitely check out more of his work. And he's basically playing a guy, um, that's posing as a guy that doesn't have arms. So he's pretending to be armless to make this girl that has this complex with guys touching her fall in love with him. So he's pretending to have no arms and he's like a criminal that finds his way into the circus and they, uh, the, the girls in the circus as well. And the girl's actually Joan Crawford, which I didn't know the entire time I was watching this film. But the girl's Joan Crawford, who of course was in Mildred Pierce. I watched that for the first time this year. Incredible actress, you know, horrible person in real life, but incredible actress. Um, 
But uh, I did not know that it was her like the entire movie, and I didn't find that out until the special feature. So she was amazing in the movie as well. Also, the other guy that's in the film. But it's just a really good movie. I, I enjoyed the... I didn't enjoy it quite as much as, as Freaks, but Lon Chaney really makes the film. So I really enjoyed um, The Unknown. Now, going back to The Mystic, like I said... Um, it's, it's about gypsies. This guy from New York kind of brings these gypsies over and they kind of had a, have a little bit of a con scheme going on over in Hung Hungary, I think is where they're from. Um, where they're just kind of, you know, duping people and putting on these performances and they're not real, but they're making people think that they're supernatural. This woman, uh, the mystic has supernatural powers when she really doesn't. So this guy catches on to them. He comes over there, scopes them out, scouts them out and brings them to New York to perform their arts, uh, for the more like rich, uh, well-off people in New York city. So Basically, he brings them over to trick everybody, and there's a bunch of stuff that goes on, inter interpersonal dramas and romance and stuff like that. Like I said, there's a good amount of romance injected into all of these films uh, from Todd Browning, so you just know that he was really interested in, in romance, and he wanted to put that in a good portion of all of his films. But it's a good movie. It's a really good movie, but like I said, it drags a little bit. But the lead actress, and I can't think of her name off the top of my head, is is great. Her facial expressions are not as good as Lon Chaney, but they're definitely almost just as good as Lon Chaney. She does a really good job um, in the film. So really enjoyed The Mystic as well. Enjoyed all these films. Now getting into the picture quality here real quick, the thing you have to understand is the movies from the 20s, they don't look the best. It's really hard to restore movies that are that old. And Criterion, I'm sure, did the best they possibly could. The Unknown in particular does not look good at all. And they even have a disclaimer at the beginning of it, um, you know, talking about it and all the work that they had to do to get it to look as good as it does in the film. And there's even like sequences where it looks like there's like a net over the actual film. Um, so don't expect like mind blowing, like Blu-ray picture quality, uh, HD quality with the unknown and the mystic. The mystic looks pretty decent, pretty good for what it is. Um, and that movie's actually older than The Unknown, so it looks better than The Unknown, I would say. But getting into the freaks, I, I really feel, and again, first time on Blu-ray, so we should be appreciative that it's at least getting a Blu-ray, right? But I really feel like they could have done a 4K with freaks, and would, it would have looked phenomenal. It really would have looked phenomenal. But it's just a 2K scan. At least they could have done a 4K scan. I'm not trying to complain, I'm really not, but I just, I see that freaks, I want, when I was watching freaks, I was like, this could look so much better in 4K. I just don't know. They did Dracula in 4K. That came out in 1931. And also The Mummy in 1932. I just really feel like they could have done Freaks in 4K. And it would have just been a mind-blowingly fantastic transfer. But as it stands, first time on Blu-ray, I think that Freaks... Uh, looked pretty damn good. It, it looked really good for what it was. In particular, the last 10 minutes, I'm talking about the sequence with all the carriages and they fall off and it's raining, super dark. You see all of the freaks crawling under the carriages in the dark and just how they look and, and it just so clear and the rain's coming down. So I think that all that stuff looks really great. But um, yeah, first time all of these movies on Blu-ray, you really can't complain. Um, I think The Mystic and The Unknown, they look as good as they possibly can look. Like, I, I fully appreciate what Criterion did. But again, do not expect fantastic HD transfers for 20 movies because you're not going to get it. But Freaks looks really damn good. I just feel like it could have looked so much better um, had they had done it in 4K. Now, getting into the audio, you do have the original mono tracks for all of these films. Now, what's interesting about uh, The Mystic and The Unknown is I don't know if they ever had music attached to them or not, or if they were just completely silent, but they actually did brand new scores and music for The Mystic and The Unknown. And I think that The Mystic um, actually used the guy that, that works with David Lynch quite frequently. So I thought that the score for The Mystic was freaking fantastic. It was so awesome, so ominous and kind of creepy in certain parts, um, especially those sequences where she's like in the room and there's the ghostly uh, like images next to her. But yeah, two brand new scores, so the music's different. I didn't know that when I was watching The Unknown because 
that's very that felt very much of that time period and the kind of music they would have around that time. So I just thought it was it's a great score, but I just thought it was of that time. But then when I watched the Mystic, I note I definitely noticed a more modern tinge to. Uh, the score in the Mystic for sure, but great music and the, and sound wise, guys, look, these are 1920s, 1930s movies. They did the best they could. You're not really going to get much better than what you get with the sound here. But everything was clear. I could hear everybody's voices. I could hear the music perfectly. I could hear the doors shutting perfectly, and uh, all sounded great to me. At least as great as it possibly could. Now, getting into the special features here, you do get uh, a, a new special feature on the Mystic, the Unknown disc. Uh, there's actually a woman, I'm trying to find her name right here, and uh, Megan Abbott is the one that does the uh, special feature. It's about 33 minutes long. I watched the entire thing. I was completely hooked because, like I said, I'm just very interested in Todd Browning as a director, and I thought she did a fantastic job just breaking down his filmography, but these three movies in particular and just how they kind of related to each other. But I think that's the only new interview that you get in this entire set. Now, on the Freaks disc, you do get the archival documentary uh, about the making of the movie Freaks, and it's about an hour long, and it's a bunch of people talking about the making of, the legacy of the movie. That's a really great documentary, but it is not um, a new documentary. You do get new commentaries um, on the unknown and Freaks, not the Mystic, but on the Mystic, you actually get a introduction um, with somebody talking about the movie as well. You also get Reading by Skull of Spurs, the short story by Todd Robbins on which Freaks is based. So they read to you the entire story, uh, the book that the movie is based on. So it's just kind of like blank screen and they're reading the book uh, to you. So that's definitely a cool addition. And then you get uh, the prologue to Freaks, which was added to the film in 1947. You also get program on the alternate endings to Freaks, video gallery of portraits from Freaks. Um, so yeah, just tons Tons of great uh, supplemental material here, but the only thing that's really new is that interview with uh, Megan Abbott where she breaks down all the films, which it's a great interview um, in its own right, but everything else is kind of, you know, uh, archival supplemental material. So, but a good amount of special features for sure. Let's go ahead and get into a quick unboxing here. Um, of the set. Fantastic packaging on this. I was hoping it would be a nice digi pack, and it absolutely is. So let me show you the artwork on that. It's just super awesome artwork. I love it. Show you the spine, show you the back of it right there. You got all the stuff right there. You got the synopsis, you got the special features, you got the, the information about the Criterion Collection. We'll go ahead and take it out of this pack right here. I love the artwork on the inside. Like I said, it's got the circus theme. And uh, you flip it on the back, it's got the titles of all the films. And then open it up, you got the two discs. Like I said, you got Freaks on one disc and the Unknown and the Mystic on another. And take those out. And you just have that kind of like circus background, circus tent kind, kind of coloring and background right there. And uh, you got a nice little booklet on the inside. It's kind of like a little notebook. Um, and you kind of flip through that. And just some great images from the films. Yeah, I really enjoyed all these films though. There's not one in this set that I did not enjoy. I think that Todd Browning is a great director and I'm definitely looking forward to checking out more of his filmography in the years to come. But at the end of the day, guys, I, I think that this box set, here's the thing. Like I said in the opening, I got this for almost 50 bucks. I, I could have waited for the sale, but I wanted you guys to know if it was worth it or not. We're getting ready to get that Criterion sale from Barnes and Noble, so and it'll likely drop down to $35 on Amazon as well during this time because they like to price match it. So I would not recommend to pick this up right now, not right away. I would wait actually until that Criterion sale and pick it up then. Um, that way you're gonna get a little bit of a discount. You're gonna get about $15 uh, discount and it'll be available on Barnes and Noble and it'll probably be the same price um, on Amazon. You could probably go into your local Barnes and Noble and pick it up as well. So I do think this is worth it though. I think it's worth the full $50. I just, I can't tell you all to grab it now when I know there's a sale coming, but there's definitely enough here. Three movies, uh, you know, about three and a half hours worth of movie. And then you got about two and a half hours worth of special features, new commentaries. And it's just really cool to have these classic films preserved on disc, on Blu-ray disc, the best they could possibly look. But thank y'all so much for watching my review of the Sideshow Shockers Todd Browning box set from the Criterion Collection. Definitely hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, comment down below your thoughts on this set, these movies, turn on the bell notifications for all future videos, and follow me on all my social media accounts. Those links are down below in the description, and we'll see you next time.
Thank you.